This tutorial will show you how to create a mask overlay containing visuals that can be placed at the top of your composition, revealing layers below it. This technique is based on a post by user Subpixel on Resolume's forum, which details how he came up with the track matte solution for Resolume. We've included a link to the forum post in the description. In this example, we'll be using black and white visuals from our monomatic set. However, you can use any footage that is grayscale and high contrast. Ideally, it would be most effective to use visuals that are white with an alpha channel, but we'll discuss how you can make it work regardless. First, let's explain the layer setup. You're going to need at least five layers for this technique, and the hierarchy should not be altered for the mask overlay to work properly. We've labeled our layers according to their role in the hierarchy, but you can name them whatever you like. This was done to make the tutorial easier to follow. Our first and bottommost layer is our mask background. This is the footage that will be visible inside of our mask. Make sure that the mask background layer has full opacity. Our second layer is our mask layer. We'll be using black and white loops as our mask. The first step, and this is important, is to create an alpha channel from our black and white loop. From the effects tab, drag the auto mask effect onto the mask layer. Right away, you can see that the black areas of our loop are now transparent, and the white parts are still visible. Depending on your visual, you might have to adjust the contrast parameter for better results. In this case, the default works great. Keep in mind that the auto mask effect is not needed if your visuals already have an alpha channel, so make sure to disable this effect if your visual has an alpha channel. Next, enable the multiply blend mode and bring the opacity slider to 50%. You can do this by right clicking on the slider. And now our mask setup is complete. Our third layer serves one purpose, and that's to combine the mask and the mask background as a single clip. We'll achieve this by using a layer router. From the sources tab, drag the layer router to an empty slot on layer three. To avoid confusion, Let's rename this layer router to Combined Mask. The default settings are what we want, specifically the composition as the layer router's input. What this clip does is inherit the combined output of all the layers below it, in this case the mask and mask background. Let's go ahead and trigger the Combined Mask. And you can leave the opacity of this layer at zero. Once this layer is set, you don't ever need to touch it again. The fourth layer is our background layer. This is the footage that'll be visible under our mask overlay. Let's trigger a visual and make sure that the opacity is set to 100%. And don't worry about this covering our combined mask. Lastly, let's bring our mask overlay to life. Again, we'll need a layer router. This is because we want our combined mask to sit above our background layer. From the sources tab, drag the layer router to an empty slot on layer five, which is our mask overlay layer. And let's rename this layer router to mask overlay. Let's trigger the mask overlay, bring up the opacity to 100%. And as our layer router input, Let's choose layer three, our combined mask. As you can see, we now have a mask overlay that sits on top of the background. Now that we have all this set up, you can trigger different mask visuals and mask backgrounds on layer one and two. Since we're dealing with a bunch of layers and to avoid headaches, we recommend that you trigger clips on its own layer. Let's go ahead and change our background visuals to something more pleasing. The setup is also great for logos. Just make sure your logo is black and white or contains an alpha channel. To change the look of your mask overlay, you can also use various transformation effects. Make sure that these effects are on your mask overlay layer. As an example, we've already got mirror set up here. You can also try out things like wave warp or other displacement effects. And since our mask is black and white, 
what we can do is use the negative space to reveal our mask backgrounds. To do this, make sure you select your mask layer and add the invert RGB effect. This will swap the black and white areas of your mask. This tends to work better with visuals that aren't too cluttered. Another cool look is adding edge detection on your mask layer. And this creates nice outlines on your black and white visuals. With a bit of experimentation, you're bound to come up with something that looks interesting. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial and find it useful for your own projects. The setup is pretty specific, so it might work best for situations that require it. Just make sure to plan your layer setup ahead of time to make it work for you. We want to give a shout out to Subpixel for sharing his technique. Make sure to check out his work, which is linked in the description. Many thanks to all of you for the likes, comments, and support. Don't hesitate to leave us a message, ask a question, or send ideas for topics you may want to see explored in the future. Be sure to visit DocOptic.com for other Resolume tutorials and content to use in your projects. Thanks for watching and happy triggering!